Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. What's happening guys, welcome back to the second last part of Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. And today is Hirata Estate 2, which I guess is theoretically something that a lot of people would miss on an average playthrough, I guess. I missed it first playthrough. Yeah? Yeah, I think I did it second. Well, so you have to do this in order to fully upgrade your attack and health for the final boss. Which... I did this in New Game Plus. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus Christ. It's not great, not gonna lie. It was an ordeal. So in order to get to the Hirata Estate 2, you need to do... Emma's quest after defeating, is it the is it Owl first time? Yeah, so after you defeat your dad, the Owl, the first time, which will be during the Ashina Raid 1, if you do her optional bits and bobs, then you will get the, the like your, the memory bell, the other one. So just like the Harata State 1, if you've got the new bell, you go to the little Buddhist uh, statue and it'll just take you here. So make there sure you've been purple, following along. There is a purple flame vent, I was right. Yeah. i just seen it on the uh, tool page. So running in here will immediately trigger a boss fight, but we're not going to fight him just now, fuck that. So we're just going to repel up here and then... Going to make sure we don't die and then use your shuriken to... Ignore that guy. Just it's fine. Just ignore. It. Make sure you use your shuriken to kill these archers because they're going to be a massive pain in the arse later if you don't kill them. So just like, you might need to really get on the edge of the ledge. Just to lock onto that guy. Yeah. There we got it. We got we got him. We got him. So then we can just continue on with the rest of the level, I suppose. Just not fighting that guy. Uh, no, no, we come back. There's a much. Go back to them. Okay. There's a <laughs> no. It's, no, it's, it's even funnier. Not, not even gonna fight him then. Yeah. Okay. It's so funny. We kill that guy in the most the most entertaining way imaginable. I mean, you could also just use the axe on him, probably. But this is uh, another way of going about it. It's works for the rest of the game. Probably works for him as well. Yeah, most most likely, most likely. Oh, you could probably pull that guy's armor off with a spear. Uh, I think you can actually. Huh. But. Who cares? Or you could just hit him twice. Yeah. Probably easier and doesn't cost you any emblems. So kill this guy. I mean, every guy here dies in one hit, so you don't even really need to go out your way. Pretty sure I just killed both of them in one hit. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> now double kill I think him. you killed both of them with just the explosion of the axe. I mean, this bit's pretty much like... Just self I mean, the, at this point, all these guys will die in like a single hit, so there's not really a whole lot to go into detail about. Nah. Just make your way downtown. So now what you want to do is take... So this bit's a little bit janky, right? Take a gatch and sugar just now. And then you want to repel up here, because there's basically those two big, uh, like, uh, tarot troops. Like, the, the big mopey guys. You want to make sure that you are going to jump out on the far side. And you want to make sure this guy doesn't see you. Now, he did see me, but that's okay because we can just, like, wait for his, um... 
what you might call it, is a... Uh, his aggro? His aggro, that's the word I was looking for. Wait for his aggro to, like, falter. Now, it turns out, he, he, like, so he did see me. It kind of looked like he was walking away. So, we just have to, like... Wait some yeah. more. Now, the reason why I kept in the janky footage is I didn't want to make, like, get, like, a perfect run of this. So then when it didn't work for you, you'd be like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? So, like, chances are it probably will, like, fuck up, quote unquote. But that's okay. Just wait for the, like, as you'll see, if you've got the gatch and sugar, they'll just, like, yellow arrow, like, pretty quickly. And then you can just go to backstab them. Like, there you go. That's it. Done. So, backstab one of them, and then you should be able to backstab the other one. Now, another method of doing this is you can just run straight past these guys and then just go at the, uh, just rest at the idle. And then, uh, when you reset, you just go around the other way and backstab them that way. So, now we're going to do the boss, and this is why we killed the archers, because... If the archers are alive, it makes backstabbing those taros significantly harder because they will always see you. So, or at the very least, it makes it harder. Like, you can obviously kill them, but it's just like more things to kill when you can just like kill them on the tower and then it's just not an issue. So use your shurikens to take care of the dogs. And then what you want to do is you want to hit this guy and bait him forward into like the, the apex of his like attack range. It's the exact same thing that you've done to, um, what's his name? Rin. Yeah. And then you just smash R1 and now he's dead. This is how you kill the boss. So sometimes the dogs will show up again for some fucking, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if he's out this far, it won't matter. They always have the same slow walk backwards to their, like, their, um, like. The reset point. Yeah, their arena ring destination. So this is just how you beat this guy. It's actually crazy that it works this way. It's unbelievable. This is to exploit in the AI. Turns out Sekiro's AI is pretty exploitable. Yeah, as it turns out. And you can just do this for two health bars, I take it? Yeah. Amazing. Almost like they couldn't have, like, figured this out. I mean, I figured this one out myself, so... Kinda makes you wonder. It's how many people tested this game. <laughs> And, th th yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now, while we're here, I just hope that I explained that last bit backstabbing the taros again, so I might as well just go over it again. So you want to kill the archers whilst you're on the tower, because it means that when you come up from, like, the underground section up that, like, jumpy tunnel thing, it just means that you don't then need to deal with the archers as well as the taros. So, and then, but then remember, if you do do the bonfire method, you do then need to take care of the archers first, because they will obviously, like, reset, so... Just kind of however you're feeling. And then that's that guy done. And then again, if he's if he's still an issue and you can't manage to bait him into the corner like that, just use the axe like you've been using the whole way. R2, R1. Then we can just pick up the Fulminated Mercury and that you could, is it. You might be able to backstab him if you kill the dogs from up in the tower with a shuriken as well. Uh, yeah, I've tried, you can. Yeah. As soon as you walk into his boss, he'll be a nice boss you. So he's like one of those bosses you like can't backstab. But it's fine because you can exploit him in other ways. Yeah, I mean, that's, if, even if you could backstab him, you still have to fight his second health bar. Yeah, but... You just pull him out of the arena and then he'll just let you beat him to death. He's just a glorified lone shadow, honestly, so he shouldn't ever be an issue in any capacity. So, we're just gonna, like, kill these guys, and then we need to sneak under the, like, the walking, like, the running board thing. Um, just like we done the first time. Now, I'm not sure if you're standing up at this point. There's a bunch, there's three lone shadows on the roof above you, which is why we're sneaking down this way. That way, none of them see you. And then there's a way that you can, like, backstab all three of them, which is what we're going to do. Does it involve gatching sugar, or is that not even necessary? Uh, no, not even necessary. Huh. I always thought these guys were some sort of, like, elite ninja, but it turns out they're pretty crap. Maybe yeah, they... we don't, we don't need to fight one legitimately at all the entire game. So you have yeah. to like jump onto that and then when you're at the apex, if you press square, your you, your character will just like turn 90 degrees to grab onto the ledge, don't worry. So then you can just like go along and he won't see you and then you can just 
lob a ceramic shard at him. He's like, huh? <laughs> With a broken, like, bowl. Yeah. He's just like, that must have been the wind. Or so, my imagination. Next we can move on just a wee bit. Uh, then you, like... Do the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. Now, I think that if you backstab the guy, normally the guy in front will hear. Yeah, he'll hear. Almost definitely he'll hear. Doesn't hear that, though, for some reason. Uh, uh, you're lower than him, so that sound doesn't travel up. This is true, but this is actually sound, sound doesn't travel up. Which was actually crazy, because I, I didn't think that's how it worked, but actually is how it works. Who'd have thought? In FromSoft games, sound doesn't travel up. I, I mean, evidently. Neither did repost or backstab windows. So, now we have to fight yet another fucking drunkard shell. This is the last one though, and he's pretty easy. Now, remember to kill this guy here uh, with the shuriken, because otherwise he's like a bit of a pain in the ass and kind of fucks up this whole strategy that we're going for just now. So as ever, we're clearing out the guards around this area. He's the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. That's why you need to kill him. Oh, so you've got fat drunk, fat drunk, fat fire drunk, fat drunk. Aye. So we can backstab this guy. And the fat fire drunk comes in on a white horse and they call him Death. And what's the other ones? Um, it's all just pestilence, 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 death. Aye. No, they're all just fat, fat, fat and death. Oh, okay. That's the four... Uh, the four horsemen of heart disease. Aye. <laughs> so what we did there was use another ceramic shard to like get these guys' attention, kind of bring them to this, the edge. But, I mean, ultimately you can just walk in here and start swinging. This is just showing you the kind of careful way of going about it. But you just need to remember that if you can't be bored with these techniques, you can just mash R1 into most of these guys and it'll do the job just fine. Oh, I got a twofer. That guy, uh... For some reason it gave you it, then decided, nah, it's fine. Yeah, and this guy's drunk, so he just kind of staggers about and doesn't do anything. So there's some more sake. So as ever, whenever we pick up some of the drinks, if I remember, you can use the drinks to speak to certain NPCs and get more dialogue out of them. It is a completely optional thing and does not right, at affect this point, anything. At this point, you can't do it with a sculptor. Sure. Just, I mean, there's certain NPCs. Uh, but you can usually do it. Sculptor, Emma, Ishin. Um, who was that guy who has the uh, Jesus statue? You, like, sent him to, his, to an early grave with that medical guy, Dojin. Oh, sure, I can't remember what the guy's name You is. can give him sake as well, I think. And he, like, talks to you about shit. Essentially, you, you'll notice that some NPCs will be like, give drink as an option, and then yeah. you can just do that and they'll just chat to you. So, remember to use the shuriken to kill that last guy that you saw at the back. There's only, like, two guys kind of floating about here. Now, there's a very specific thing you need to do here. You need to lock onto the lone shadow that he's speaking to, Use the malcontent ring, and then bait him over to that rock, and then get behind this wall quick enough before he sees you. Then, when he comes to find out and he's like, huh? You then bait him to this bit, and then you, like, kill him that way. So then, uh, Juzo will, like, start getting wise to what you're doing, but then you just quit out and load back in, and backstab him, and there you go! Yep. Now, ain't this a technique? Ain't that a kick in the head? For him it is, anyway. A katana in the head. Well, it's, it, it will be soon enough. He's got a bigger sword, though. Fuck it. Is, this is just Juzo again, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the size of him, he's like 12 foot tall. His cock must be gigantic, man. Oh yeah, it is just Juzo the drunkard again. He's yeah. even got the same amount of health. And it's the same technique, except now you get to use the mortal drum. <laughs> Ah, oh, you don't have your little pal to help you, though. Not that it matters at this stage. Nah, it certainly does not. So all we want to do is bait out an attack, use the mortal draw, and... run away and bait out some more attacks! Honestly, man, the mortal draw is really, really good. Now, one thing I will say is if you do get hit, just heal back up to full health, because a lot of the time he can just do an inordinate, an inordinate amount of damage to you. So there's no point in taking any kind of risks, especially when you've already taken off a full, like, health bar. The guy's a fucking unit. Oh, he is a unit. I'm in awe at the size of this lad, but... I, I, he's got at least half a human on you, in terms of just height alone. <laughs> I know. 
Managed to avoid that grab there. Nice. He's to like him. a gigantic dwarf. That's that's the sort of stature he's got. It's a bit of an oxymoron. He's there. tall and stout at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so there we get the second last prayer bead we need to max out our HP. Bet you he'd sink like a brick if you flung him in a swimming pool. Oh wait, no, that was the last one. That's the last prayer bead in the game, I'm sure. Yeah, should be. Which means now we get to max out our HP for the next boss coming up. Now, there's a few enemies in this area. Ultimately, it's... Uh, you know, again, I'm just showing you, like, a, a careful way of going about it. But it's still, you know, not the biggest deal. You get to just walk in there and then just backstab him. There you go. That's just your easy way of dealing with him. Get some more Fulminated Mercury. That's, like... An, that's an upgrade material, by the way. Probably mentioned that. But I, I, I guess you, you'll probably work it out. Yeah. Right, they, they've came up a few times in uh, his loot. So then you get to gouge on top this guy. And then there's another guy to take care of in there. Where is he? There he is. Somehow can't see you. Now, I have tried and tried and tried to find a way to backstab this guy in the white. I cannot do it. So you just need to run up and use the axe. <laughs> I think there is a way. And it'll probably be like throwing a ceramic shard at the wall beside them with free aim. Ah, so the problem being is the wall behind them is just destructible. So, like, the slightest thing will just destroy it. Oh yeah, that's what you need to do, is get them to like... So all I did was just go, you know what, fuck this. Now the problem was is that I'd ran out of emblems at this point. So just make sure you don't run out of emblems at this point. Oh, he's not even like remotely difficult he's just a dude with a spear i thought he was going to be like the fucking like the boss over at the bridge nah that you need mccary kit or something no, just a guy it wasn't even a general just random dude with spear and there's some pellet to pick up as well just walked up and r one them so the next boss coming up is one of the bosses that i would suggest like you know you've been saving up all these healing items throughout the game like we've said uh, you know, don't don't use them, keep them. And the boss coming up is a boss where you have permission to use your healing items for this boss coming up. In some instances, uh, the next boss is actually more difficult than the end boss in some, depending on your perspective and how you feel about things. And again, the technique we're going in with is blast out phase one. And if you fuck up, it doesn't matter, just try again. Um, because you've not spent any time or effort doing it, so it's not going to be a, an irritating process. You just go in, like, you know, fucking brute force your way through phase one. Should be easy enough with an axe, as you'll see. And then if it doesn't work, it's okay, just try again. And then when it comes to phase two, because you've killed them in like 15 seconds with an axe, you've got nine or ten heals and a whole bunch of extra leeway to kind of just work out the, the second half. And that's, I think, a pretty good strategy for a lot of things. Hopefully you agree. But what we want to do is we want to go in and equip our Akko Sugars, our Ungo Sugars, use the Ceremonial Tanto, and then we need to back him into a corner and use the axe. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of similar to the first time you fight him. To make a point, you're fighting Owl. Which is your dad again. Ah, uh, but he's evolved now. Yeah, now he's like Owl brackets 100%. Yeah. SS Owl. Or, uh, Owl bracket unlock potential. <laughs> Fuse with Kami. <laughs> right, so we're munching these sugars. And now, just to make a point, again, this will be a good run footage. Um, but you might get a better run, but this is ideally what you're looking to get. You come into the corner, it'll attack you, and you want to try and get his back to a wall in some, in some way. And this will... Uh, allow you to just go ham on him. So that was uh, R1, R2, R1, R1, and then R2. And like as you can see, this is like really maxing out that fucking. Not even taking a hit yet. <laughs> not only that, you can like set him on fire after a few goes, and there you go. That is that is best case scenario run, and it is very possible to do. But he does move about a lot, and in this case, you know, you like try and turn around. You want to try and make sure his back is to a wall the whole time. And now you're in phase two. And uh, this 
kind of plays out a lot like the second phase of the first time you fight Owl, except he does so, so much damage to you, and sometimes there's just certain combos that you're trying to look out for. The problem being is that so, there was some, there was one, oh my god, there was this one attempt that I tried to do and he would just not create a fucking opening for so long that eventually he just beat me because he just kept using the same fucking attacks over and over again. And no, was, you know how it feels when you <laughs> do it to all these bosses, like Juzo and shit like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't like it when the game adapts to me. <laughs> so, there's certain openings you're looking out for. Specifically this right here. That is the main opening. He'll fire a shuriken out at you, do like one attack, and if the attack doesn't like connect, he'll then have like a kind of... Uh, like, not wind down frame, but just... Kind of like a slight pause, and that's where your opening is. Uh, the overhead slash as well, that's a good opening, unless he goes straight into this... Um, Sometimes he'll just fade away into the little bird and then he'll do this kind of like unexpected attack from like a random direction. So just watch out for that. He can still Makira counter you in this fight by the way. Yes, so don't use any like stabbing attacks. Which is like the running charged R1. Yeah. Don't use that. He'll uh, he'll catch you. So he only has like a few main combos. Um... It's a so lot there, like there you the go, first there fight. you go, opening, he missed it, and then that gives you the perfect opening and just fucking fire in with a mortal draw. It's a lot like the first fight, but he, he doesn't have owl, yeah, he it, doesn't have the poison move, right? The, he doesn't have the thing that stops you healing, so at the very least you're never going to be able to not heal. And because you, fa you know, maxed, like, completely annihilated his first form, then you can just start healing. And also, because you've got way more heals than you would normally, you can maybe get a little, a little bit more ballsy looking for more uh, openings. But as you can see, this, this strategy is actually highly effective at defeating Owl. Now, this attack is what some guides say to look out for. It'll, like, charge you and, like, do this kind of, like, charge and sweep. The problem being is that he has two versions of this, one of which is easy enough to dodge, and the other version is fucking impossible to dodge. And if you get caught in that combo, it is horrendous. <coughs> Like, unless you can get out of the combo at some point, like, you're just going to be in for a really bad time. So really, there's only two openings that you should be looking out for. His vanishing's a pain in the ass for the mortal draw as well. Because he, like, disappears. So you can uh, get in an attack or two, uh, sometimes with the, if he does the big kind of, like, wind. You like, could make a counter that. stab. So yeah, you can make a counter it. If you ain't a bitch. But, yeah, just run away in Mortal Draw. So, th this attack right here, this is the one that some people say to attempt to create an opening with, because if you dodge the initial attack, it lets you get an opening in. But I say absolutely do not go for that. It is so risky because if he uses the version of the that move where it's like super, it's got crazy tracking on it, he's most times going to hit you with it and it's going to be horrible. Now, when he sends the bird at you, that's generally when he's going to use that, like, big charge up poke attack. And, um, sometimes, depending on the placement, it can be, like, hard to get the opening. But sometimes you get the opening, and if you can get it, you know, take advantage of it. Like, just now, when he just uses it raw. And the cool thing is, is that you can go from, like, running into the mortal draw. So you can, like, take advantage of that to just kind of, like, in one kind of flurry, get it out of him. So, again, I'm just making a point. That attack that he done just there was the one to, like, there is an opening involved in it, but it's just, it's just not worth it. You just wait for him to fire some shurikens at you and you know what you're dealing with. Hopefully he'll do the the main opener. Yeah, so that was him using, like, the main combo, and, like, if I got caught in that, I was fucking dead. So just be, be aware. At this point, you should have used a Jizo. Anyway, to guarantee. Yeah, probably. Now, the problem with what had happened happened there is because he'd, like, managed to get rid of the lock-on, he, like, came at me from, like, a weird angle and then started using the combo, so it was just, like, fucked up. I was like, oh my god. So, now I've got... it. I was your dad. So, now I've got a sloppier version of this that I can show you, just so you can, like, you know, you can, like, uh, recover from, like, a shit run, essentially. <clears throat> 
So again, we're Tantone, so we've got more Axe. We are Ungoing, so we're taking less damage. We're Akoing, so we're doing more damage. And we are coming in here. And he should come in for like, there we go. We managed to dodge attack straight into the corner like last time. So as you can see, it is a completely replicatable move. Not only that, he does that big like overhead swing. And he does like so, he takes so long to do it. Um, you're able to just like get in your R2 with the axe, which is pretty good. Then if you, once you've got him on fire with the axe, that's it, it's like game over. I seen your mistake there is that you were in R1, R1. You were just going R2, R1, R2, R1. You yeah. weren't following up with the other R1. So instead of him blocking twice, he would just go into that attack to follow up. Interesting. You, need to, you had to continue your R1 combo to force him into the overhead instead of him doing the quick slash, which was what kill, killed you the first time. So that was all. You were 1 R2. You were 1 R1 too few. Sure. In your combo. But <clears throat> otherwise, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, just remember, if you do die during his first form, it's okay, because as soon as you kill him, you'll get your revive back again. So, it's kind of free, in a way. So, there you go. That was him. That was that was the main opener just there. He throws a shuriken at you, does one slash, and if it doesn't connect, his combo ends. And right there, that is the other opener. The big, double-handed, somersault, like, slam attack. That's the other main opener. And then the other opener is this one right here. The corkscrew stab, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Do you think Owl has, like, the same ability as an Owl, where he can just, like, turn his head 360 <laughs> degrees, and that's why he's such a good ninja? No one can kill him because There's he's open. got eyes on the back of his head. I'd like to think that's the reason. Uh, you sneak up on him and his head, like, snaps 180 right <laughs> round and catches you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> There's the opener again. I'm just going to point out the openers that you should be looking out for. And that is absolutely not the opener you want to go for, especially because he pure fakes you out and makes it look like he's going to end the combo and then just fucking keeps going. So you want to be avoiding that. You want to avoid this one at all costs because he just takes off so much damage with that. And again, you know, it will always fall up with the corkscrew attack. There's the opener. Avoid this one. As you can see, like look at look how horrible that is. You get caught in that is like instant death if you're not prepared. <laughs> so again, avoid that attack. Despite like you could probably have taken advantage of that if you felt balls and you, you saw the, the opportunity. There you it go. Easy peasy. Of, most, he just of came the, most of the attacks of opportunity that you're pointing out are all started with a quick like double dash to the side or something oh yeah so like, um, th those are pretty common he'll like sideways dash before he goes into the shuriken throw and then into the the move or he'll double dash and then do the sliding thrust yeah yeah it looks like so the dashes <laughs> could also be an indicator of what moves coming next it looks like so after he does the fake out and his main attack string if he keeps going you can clip him uh like right at the end of his attack string as you saw there Again, I would only really do that if you're feeling particularly ballsy or confident. Otherwise, you just seem to be keep running around in circles and avoiding, because he, he goes invisible, changes location, drops down from behind you and stuff like that. Um, so if you can't see him, just start running towards where he last was and you'll probably be away from him. Yeah. He, they'll typically spawn behind you. Same with the owl and stuff like that. If it's flying around and shit, it just gets in the way. It's just such a battle of attrition with this guy, it really, really is. I mean, he is Daddy Dearest. <sighs> right at the end as well fucking gets me. Absolute bastard. Makiri counter would have came in handy there. And that was from full health as well. He one-shot me. You get hit with a wombo combo. But there we go, right there. I was just like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna raw dog it. Like right there, imagine you flip her up, you stab him in the back and his head just spins and goes, it's not over yet, and he parries <laughs> you and there's a stage three. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. It's full head snap. So now just remember, upgrade your attack and uh, that'll be you having your... And this is, you also need to do this to get one of the endings as well, because you need to get the aromatic flower. Yeah. 
At least I think that's the case. Yeah, because he's the one who stole it. Bad yeah. dad. Bad. Right. Spank that owl. And then now the last the last part is literally just the last boss. It's, I mean, there's like a tiny bit else, but it's, it's all essentially the last boss. Now, there is one NPC quest that I'm sure an amount of people will have mentioned at this point. Uh, this should also be uh, the... Yeah. So the Phantom Kunai is like a key item that uh, Anayama the peddler sell, sold, and then that was also an air death blow that the guy you got Iron Fortress off of sold. So that's just what these are. So now, before we finish the game, we do need to do this guy's quest which gets you the bite down which is like an infinite um oh, i can't remember what that item is it's the it's item... a cyanide pill yeah so it makes you it... it's you can't kill me i quit <laughs> the item and then so you die enemies lose aggro because you died yeah and you can still use your revive to get back up yeah pretty much so essentially this just gets like if you're like surrounded by a bunch of enemies uh there is like a consumable version of this item it's, it never really comes up, honestly. It's not particularly useful. You can maybe use it to, like, suicide run through an area, quite literally. Like, run through, get a bunch of aggro, kill yourself, and then once the enemies drop leash, just get back up and walk away. Yeah. Uh, so the thing as yeah. well is, so you speak to him, and you can do this guy's quest as soon as you get the Mortal Blade, which should be round about part... Ugh. It's after Senpu Temple. It's when you do the folding screen door monkeys is when you first get the monkey. The, so in, in this case, it'll be after you do Genichiro, like once yeah. you've done the, the uh, monkeys. So once you get the mortal blade, you can come to this guy and just you can kill him. like Circumcise the centipede. Yeah. And then when he drops, he'll drop the bite down, which is just, like we said, the infinite use. Uh, I can't remember what the fucking item is called. That's it, they're hidden to. No, I know, but the, the, I can't remember what the consumable version is called. Bite down. Oh, yeah, you're right, it is bite down. Fucking hell, fucking yeah. fuck yeah. hell. But this entire time you've been staring at the infinite use one Jesus while Christ. going, I can't remember what the consumable one is. <laughs> this is the one you're talking about, you fucking idiot. Look at the yeah. screen. Okay, it is an infinite use bite down, <laughs> Jesus. And the reason why I've left it till this point is just because it's not really a particularly good item. No wonder this is such a smart hero run. It really is. What do you mean? It's, it's just... Like... You be like, what's the, the conceivable bite that like no wonder you just beat the game by going like big axe swing and R1 and then Like that's you're just it. jelly, you never thought of it. No, I'm just enraged that it's even possible. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> well hopefully this episode was useful to you. I think this is a particularly good uh, good episode because the owl tactics I've not seen anybody replicate and frankly, this is definitely the easiest you're gonna have because if you want to go up to him like toe to toe, like the way you're meant to play the game, you're gonna be, it is really fucking difficult. That is almost exactly the point in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it yet? Nah. No, just axe good, sword axe, bad. Okay. Axe good, sword bad, yeah. R2 good, L1, no, <laughs> no, no. Look, the problem being is that if you fuck up, like, one deflect, one block, he gets you in that combo and just kills you. That's the point. That's the point. You're not meant to fuck up. You're supposed to be a honed samurai warrior by that point. You need Sekiro VR. That's what you need. I'd actually kill myself. If you had Sekiro VR, I think you would end up... Yeah, you'd probably literally kill yourself if you had Sekiro VR. Well, anyway, hope you'll have hopefully you enjoyed that part. Stay tuned for the next part where I will uh, I will teach you how to change cheese. Catch you later. <laughs>